Hello everyone, Steve from Martell Training Group. Today I'd like to talk to you about the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision involving a New York case. The case was New York State Pistol and Rifle Association versus Bruin. Bruin being Kevin Bruin, the superintendent of the state police in New York. This case is interesting because it definitely affects what happens in other states, namely New Jersey as far as the permitting process. And I'd like to talk to you today about how that affects civilians applying for and receiving permits to carry in New Jersey. This U.S. Supreme Court decision in New York will definitely have an effect on citizens of New Jersey applying for permits to carry handguns. It already has with AG memos and directives that have been sent out to police departments in New Jersey. The U.S. Supreme Court has told the state of New York that you cannot have a proper cause requirement of applicants applying for a permit to carry in the state of New York. And it's very similar to what happens in New Jersey. And I'll explain the permitting process in New Jersey and how that is going to affect, I'm sure it already has affect applications statewide in New Jersey. So what the U.S. Supreme Court has told the state of New York, namely the state police because they handle the permitting process in New York, is that you cannot have a proper cause requirement because it violates the 14th Amendment preventing ordinary citizens, law-abiding citizens, from exercising their Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms for, in public for self-defense. I will put a link in the description of the video below so you can get a full description of the case and the decision. So how does this affect people in New Jersey applying for permits to carry? Well, as a retired New Jersey State Trooper and former unit head or supervisor of the Firearms Investigation Unit, I'm well familiar with the firearms laws in the state of New Jersey and with the permitting process. There are basically two types of permits to carry in the state of New Jersey currently. The RPO being one of them, or Retired Police Officer Permit to Carry Program, and that, of course, by its name, indicates that you need to be retired from some type of law enforcement in order to get this permit. To apply for the RPO, initially, you need your Chief of Police to sign off on your application. Sign off saying that, in their opinion, you don't suffer from any of the disqualifiers by law. Also, the chief needs to sign off that you retired in good standing from the organization. After the background is conducted and all the proper checks are conducted, the application is set for review by the superintendent of state police who either uh, approves or denies the applications. The application does not go through the courts for RPO. recent decision in U.S. District Court in New Jersey has ruled in favor of retired police officers that they do not need the RPO to carry under LEOSA. You can see that in this video here with detailed descriptions of what the RPO versus LEOSA uh, differences are. So please see that video for more information on LEOSA and the New Jersey RPO. The second type of permit to carry in the state of New Jersey involves the courts. So this particular permit, you would apply through your local police station. There are specific forms to complete and you have to provide three character references in addition to proof that you've completed a firearm safety uh, training course and qualification with the firearm that you intend to carry. In addition, prior to this U.S. Supreme Court decision in New Jersey, you were required to submit a justifiable need certification for the permit to carry. In other words, the court wanted to see why you were, why you felt you needed this permit to carry. And you couldn't put down you couldn't write a letter saying, I live in a bad neighborhood, I work late at night, and I'm in fear for my safety and my family's safety when I'm walking home at night. That wasn't good enough. You had to provide a specific threat against your life that was documented, well documented, with your police department. And you had to submit the case investigation reports from the police department. The courts were very specific on this justifiable need. So in most cases in New Jersey, these permits have to do with armed security officers or armored car drivers that need to be armed for work. So that justifi justifiable need is a letter from the armored car company or the security company saying, John Doe needs a firearm to work at my company. So that was the justifiable need. And the, what happens is the chief of police submits, they, do, they conduct a background investigation, 
They do all the database checks, they contact your character references, they review all your documents, and they make sure that everything's in order. The chief of police either denies or approve your application. The chief of police is not approving or denying your right to permit to carry. They're, they're approving or denying your application. Assuming the chief approves your application, and I have seen local chiefs of police approve permits to carry applications, then the whole packet is forwarded to the superior court of the where the applicant resides. That superior court judge or a judge, superior court judge that reviews firearms applications will review that application and approve or deny. And I will tell you that unless it's for work purposes or unless you we're in some unique position like you're for example you're a physician who does house calls in say the city of newark and you carry narcotics if it's not for work or an unusual situation you are not getting approved for that permit before this decision this court decision so you would have a case where the chief would submit the application and then it would get to the court and the judge would deny the application now however with this u.s supreme court decision that removed the proper cause requirement in the state of New York, which prompted New Jersey Attorney General to issue a directive or memo to the New Jersey Police Departments. And this all happened within the last week, basically stating, and I will put a link to the AG directive that went to the police departments in the description below, basically saying that although we can't require applicants to provide a justifiable need certification, we can still require that they meet all the other requirements by statute and background investigation and disqualification and all that kind of stuff. So basically the attorney general is reminding the police departments to do their job as if they needed reminding. The attorney general and the governor are already trying to prevent citizens of New Jersey from obtaining permits to carry from this court case, from this U.S. Supreme Court decision in the New York case, they're already trying to prevent it. They've already, the attorney general has already released a directive telling police departments that you cannot require them to submit a justifiable need certification with their application, but you can still basically continue to scrutinize the application and look for other reasons to deny them. That's my interpretation of the directive. So they're trying, but I don't see how they can succeed because if you have a person who's responsible, is of high moral character, who has submitted all the proper paperwork, they meet all the qualifications by statute to possess firearms, I don't see how the application will be denied for uh, a person that meets all these requirements. So we will see what happens uh, in the next and the up upcoming uh, weeks and months with this court decision. But in my opinion, it's a win for responsible gun owners and citizens who want to carry to protect themselves and their families. I've often said the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. However, I do believe that the good guy with a gun needs a little bit more training than just a safety course and qualification at the range. Now, I realize most people were not police officers and were not in the military. However, I do believe that if more civilians are going to be carrying firearms, there should be some additional training required. I know some people don't agree with this. They, they think that if you've met all the requirements, then you should be able to carry, no questions asked. And I know in some cases, you know, that's fine. Close quarter combat or close quarter battle training. And, I, and I'm not talking about the, you know, weeks training that the Marines go through. I'm talking about... There are classes out there that firearms instructors will teach to civilians and it just gets you more comfortable with your firearm. It just teaches you things like what to do if you're in uh, close quarters with someone. So how do you hold your firearm? You're not going to hold it out where you say you would hold it out stretched out far at the range. This, you know, you, your close quarters, you would hold it closer to your body, for example. Just gets you more comfortable with the weapon. Me, for example, I've been carrying a firearm pretty much every day for 27 years. I carry it like my keys, my wallet, my cell phone. I don't even think about it. It's just another thing that I grab out of my safe before I leave the house when I go out. So for me, I'm very comfortable with it. So for someone who has never carried a weapon before and now all of a
a sudden they're going to meet these requirements and carry a weapon, I do believe that additional training can only help. The last thing you want to do is get into a confrontation with someone who does not have a weapon and then at the end of that conf confrontation they now have your weapon because they've taken it from you. So you have a bad guy that didn't have a weapon and now he has a weapon that you've basically provided to him. So that's what you want to avoid at all costs. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section and consider subscribing to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe.